I think it's safe to say that this is one of the more exciting off season for the Kings, especially coming off their success last year, ending the 16, uh, 16. 17 year, 16 yeah. season playoff drought. Um, how do you, you know, in recent years, have you remembered or can you point back to seeing this much excitement coming into a season um, for the Sacramento Kings? The only, the only way, time I can remember where you could equate it a little bit would have been in the early 2000s. You know, I always remember the lockout season was after several bad years, not like 16, but uh, that team turned around with Weber and Devots and Jason Williams and the excitement that team brought. And then the next year, you really were so excited because you knew they were good. And you didn't know how good, but you knew they were good. And I think it's the same way now, you know, that this team took everybody by surprise last year and, and proved they were good. And now, you know, it's like, okay, we, we know they're good. Now, how good? It's interesting to say that. One of the things that Mike Brown said in regard to being good, this was during training camp. He said, it's not that hard to go from okay to good, but it is extremely hard to go from good to great. And when you look at this team and what they were able to accomplish, do you see them potentially achieving the greatness that Mike Brown talks about? Well, I, I'd like to be wrong. I, I think it's a year, several years away. I still think it's a, a work in progress. I always say going back to those teams uh, with the Kings when they got to be the best record in the league a couple of years, uh, it didn't happen in one year. Each year there was a, a growth process. And I, I would say the same thing people at Denver. Uh, their championship team last year. Well, they were good for several years. They just kept getting better. And and I think that's where the Kings are. And I, I know Coach Brown, you know, wants to focus on, we were focused on trying to win a championship, which is what they should do. I guess just uh, my opinion is they're probably not there yet. Is that, so trust the process. It's a trust process. Trust the process. It is a process. Now, with that being said, uh, the expectations. Obviously, over the last decade or so, when the Kings were just going through their lowest of times, each season there was not a lot of expectation coming into it. This season they're coming off being a third seed, coming off winning 48 games, uh, taking the defending champions to seven games in the first round. The expectation is a lot higher for the Sacramento Kings this year, not just in the division, but in the Western Conference as a whole. How do you feel that expectation will affect them coming into this year, especially when you look at some of these guys like De'Aaron and Harrison, who's been on this team for a while, who've never had to load that expectation coming in. Mm -hmm. um, when you have high expectations like that for a team, how do you think the team will um, embrace uh, that? I, I think they'll, they really want it. You know, I mean, I think they, you know, proved to themselves when, when a lot of so-called experts last year didn't give them a chance, and, and really still are kind of disrespecting them a little bit again this year. So I, I think it's a kind of team that certainly they have the togetherness that uh, very few teams have. And, and I think just great leadership in, in Coach Brown. I, I don't know that I've seen a, a, a better head coach, you know, as far as what you need to build a team. And then Monty McNair, the GM, I mean, they're both right at the top of their professions in the league. So you got that. And I mean, they're realistic. They've been seen, seen it. I mean, uh, so, so they know it's a process and they know it's probably going to be harder because of the success they had last year. So they're not going to sneak up on anybody this year. I like that. You know, and, and speaking of Brown and McNair, obviously they're, they're both the defending coach of the year and executive of the year, uh, respectfully. And obviously that's something that they earned with that. So we actually just had a brief chance to talk about this when Matt came in, but we got our first look at the Kings during the regular season mm -hmm. last night, not counting preseason, but uh, they kicked off the regular season with a 130 to 114 win over the Utah Jazz. And like you said, uh, the, the offense clearly did not skip a beat. And this is a historic offense that they had last year as far as offensive efficiency. Um, when you looked at that game yesterday, was there anything in particularly that stood out to you or anything where you looked at and you were like, okay, the, the Kings made a statement? Well, I do think I was really impressed with the bench. I mean, I, I thought they had good pieces, but I I, I thought, whoa, you know, uh, Duarte and Mc, JaVale McGee, I mean, and, and Sasha. I mean, I think they're really good fits. 
you know, and there again, that's a credit to, to Coach Brown and Monte. I mean, they know what they need, or they're pretty sure. Doesn't mean you can always get it, but you, you at first at least need to know what you need, and they certainly do. And they and they got some of the pieces. I mean, I think here again, I think there may be a piece away. That's just me, but uh, I hope I'm wrong there. By the way, I hope I'm really wrong that they that they're good enough to just go as they are for. 10 straight years, but uh, yeah, it, that, the bench, and I, I thought there was a better defensive uh, effort. You know, I, I'm really impressed with uh, De'Aaron Fox. I, I think last year we saw a, a better effort on defense, and it, and it last night, I mean, I think you're seeing improvement because he can be almost great on that end as well, his quickness and length, and, you know, he's just uh, off the charts. He definitely is, uh, especially coming off an All NBA nod and his first All Star appearance. So, and I th- believe he just signed a Steph Curry shoe brand. But um, yeah, I saw that. So uh, you know, hey, Steph's going down, Darren's going up. So uh, <laughs> good, good way to look at that. Yeah, I mean, Steph's been up for so long; he needs to give someone else. Yeah, a chance. yeah. Uh, Darren's ready to uh, <laughs> take that top spot. Right. Well, going off of that, tomorrow the Kings have their home opener, and they welcome in. The Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry and company, a team that has kind of grown into a little rivalry, shall I say, over the last year or so, specifically with uh, the playoff run. Um, In this game tomorrow, I know it's their home opener. I know it's going to be exciting for a lot of Sacramento Kings fans. Um, Do you feel that they should approach this game any differently than any other team that they would uh, uh you know, prepare for, or because it is the Golden State Warriors, because of the history, because of the rivalry, and looking to avenge what happened, do you think they should enter with a little more oomph? In it? Well, I think they will anyway, you know, first home opener. I mean, so that kind of just goes with it. And certainly, you're not going to have to do anything. The, the players know the Warriors, the Warriors know the Kings, the coaches know the coaches. Uh, no, it's, it's you know, it's a perfect rivalry in that sense. There's There's nothing special you're going to do, I think, to fool the Warriors. The Warriors aren't going to do anything that's going to fool the Kings uh, at this stage. So it's good. You know, you just go out there and play your best game and, uh, you know, hope you make the last three. That's about the way it's going to work. Exactly. Especially with a team like the Warriors who can shoot that three like there's no tomorrow. Um, One one other thing I want to ask you in regards to that. Uh, Before this interview, we were talking about the old Kings uh, Arena, and I'm not mm-hmm. talking uh, the one before Golden One, which was Arc. Well, excuse me, Sleep Train. Yeah. But before that, the original one where they played for the first three years, and you were just talking about the intimacy of that place and how great it was. Uh, my question to you is, you know, as much basketball as you've been around, as many places that you've traveled to arenas, um, what is it that is unique and special about Kings fans um, that maybe you have not seen in any other city? Well, I think two things. I think loyalty, number one. I mean, you know, because they've had to suffer <laughs> more than than a lot of fan bases. And the second thing is, I've always said, I think they're the most knowledgeable of anywhere. And for this reason, I mean, so many areas or so many teams, a high percentage of their season ticket holders are corporate. You know, where they are, ours here, they're people who bought their tickets. And, uh, and so that is significant. And I've always said during some of the bad years, I've always believed that our fans really knew the league better. I mean, they understood who, who the outstanding teams and players were and could appreciate good basketball, whether it's the Kings or the other team. And, and I, I, I think that's very rare in the league. So I, I'm, I'll stand on that. I think it's those two things. Yeah, they definitely are loyal. And when you put a team through 17 years of losing, that'll prove their loyalty. Yeah, I was starting to wane a little bit. I'm glad they did, but I was I was starting to wane just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people were. You weren't the only one, Jerry. Uh, now, something else I went to touch on, and you kind of answered this earlier, but was in regard to the makeup of this team and the you know where they can possibly go. It was the first day of training camp this year, which was, I don't know, three weeks ago, whenever it was. And... Mike Brown had told the media, and we were, or, or the media scrum during um, a, a Q and A session, that you know, look, making the playoffs is great, but he said verbatimly, um, "We're not here to make the playoffs. We're not here to make a playoff run. 
we are here to win a championship. Mm -hmm. And going in with that kind of mentality, basically, in other words, we're not satisfied to just make it to the playoffs and get bounced out of the first round. We're here to win championships. Now, I know that you said earlier in this interview that there's still a process. Like, you know, I don't think anyone is going into this season saying the Kings are going to win the NBA title mm -hmm. this year. Um, but if you had to look, you know, look at this team, especially some of the other teams around the West mm -hmm. and how a lot of other teams have gotten better. Um, if you kind of had to put a, I don't know, a time frame, how many, you know, years removed or pieces removed, all-stars removed, do you think we can get to a point where we say, the Sacramento Kings are a legitimate championship contender? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I mean, I, I do think they're probably at least a piece away. Uh, and, and certainly don't dis. I mean, I understand Coach Brown. I mean, as a coach, you, you're, you know, you don't want to tell your guys, hey, you know, just uh, if we get in the playoffs, that's enough. Uh, you know, or uh, I've heard fans say, well, he, that's ridiculous him saying that. It's like, well, what do you want him to say? I hope we win 25 games? Of, co of course. <laughs> He's going to, he, he should be like that. And, and the players should be like that. Think you can win every game. And as of now, they have. But, but I, I, I personally think they're probably a, a, at least another piece away. And I think, uh, you know, if things would go well, maybe in the third year of this rebuild, they could be a, because the West, as good as it is, I don't think there's any great teams. You know, you're not talking about the Bulls of Jordan or, or even the Durant. Curry uh, Warriors are, are going back to the Showtime Lakers or Bird Celtics, that type thing. There, there's, there's nobody like that. So, you know, the, there's more balance. And so, uh, so I really do think it, it, the process could be speeded up because of that. Yeah, that's interesting. And plus, you look at the, a dynasty team like the Warriors, they are getting older. Yeah. So it's not like they're going to dominate the next five years or whatever. Um, and even though the championship last year came out of the West and the Denver Nuggets, you know, they, there's still a lot of teams you can challenge them for the throne. So yeah, I mean, and they won 53 games. Well, but they were the the West champions and the eventual champions. And the, certainly, there's a couple of outstanding teams probably in the East, in the Celtics and the Bucks. I don't think there's any doubt there in the in Denver. But after that, boy, you could name six, eight teams who you think is the next best. And I think you'd have to put the Kings in there in that bunch however you want to do it. And so, you know, health and development and, you know, this team, the one thing I would say about this team, as far as my experience, I think the most unselfish team that I've ever seen, you know, certainly, certainly are the Kings and among all the good, the most unselfish and maybe as unselfish as any team I've ever seen. Yeah, I totally agree with that. You know, good case in point, like you guys were talking about was in yesterday's game, you see that first half and, you know, it wasn't like Fox or Savonis had 25 field goal attempts in that half. They were spreading the ball, and it's, you know, like you said, they play unselfish basketball. Yeah, that, I always say that's where it comes from, really. I mean, obviously your coach, but if you're two stars buy in, you know, to being unselfish and looking after one another type thing, and you have that. And so that, that just bodes well. I love that. Now, just a couple more things, and I'm going to let you get out of here. Um, this is just to you personally. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions is, you know, like I was telling you beforehand, um, you are probably one of the most revered uh, Kings members uh, s since the Sacramento area. And, um, you know, obviously your, your legacy, you know, doesn't need any talking. I mean, people know what you've done uh, for this city, for the Kings. Um, and just your high basketball IQ and everything that you brought to it. Um, so my question to you is, you know, Jerry, when you look at what you've been able to accomplish, you know, as an executive, as a basketball coach, as every, you know, as a TV analyst and everything of that sort, um, what do you attribute um, your, uh, your ability to be um, excel or to be great and to have longevity um, what do you, you know, when you look back, what do you attribute that to? That's a great question. I think as much as anything, uh, <laughs> probably trying to keep in mind that I work for the fans. You know, I've always tried to keep that understand, uh, even though, you know, it's, it's a different kind of thing, but I, I've always uh, approached it that way, you know, and I think my background in college division and junior college, you know, I mean, I think that helped me because I knew you know, kind of growing up in the coaching business or basketball business that, 
the, it's the fans that really dictate everything. And so, so I've tried to approach it that way that, hey, uh, this guy, you know, maybe he's kind of bugging me a little bit, but he's helped pay my salary. <laughs> Good point. They buy those tickets. Um, so, and then my other thing is, Jerry, if you can go back and tell 21 year old or 22 year old Jerry when you were just getting started uh, in this in this field, if you can go back and tell 21 or sit down with 22 year old Jerry, what would you tell that person um, as far as the advice to where you've gotten now? Well, I, I would say, you know, be prepared, work hard, don't expect, you know, basically advancement just because you're ready for it. Uh, but be when you are good enough, eventually you'll get your chances to make your advances. But uh, I think so many young people expect, well, I got a degree, so I want to be vice president of a corporation or something. Well, it doesn't work that way. And so, you, you know, and don't be ashamed to take a, a job that a lot of people wouldn't in order to prove that you can do it. In other words, uh, you know, my, my dad always gave me the probably best advice when I didn't want to hear it back when I was younger. And he said, you know, if you're going to work for a man, if he's going to pay you $5 a day, then give him $6 worth. And uh, I've always thought that at the time it didn't make sense, but it does now and it has for years, you know, just give them a little more than they're expecting. I love that. And actually leads me to my last question, which you may have just given me the answer. You're somebody who a lot of people look up to, coaches, players, um, for mentoring and things of that sort. You've inspired thousands of people. For you coming up, who was the one person who inspired you? Who was the one person Jerry Reynolds look up, looked up to and um, whether for guidance, advice, or just wanted to model your career after? Actually, it was a, a, a high school teacher. Uh, Phil Summers was his name. Uh, and I was a junior in high school, and, and I just was so impressed with him. He was a young, young teacher at that time, and he helped me make some decisions as far as where I should go to college and, and this, that, and the other. And eventually, you know, I got my start in junior college, not just as a player, but later as a coach, and he later became the president of the same place. So, you know, we had a, you know, it's one of those things where I think I picked the right guy. Uh, uh, but, you know, for a small town country guy, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. And, and I think he really gave me leadership and provided me leadership. And thankfully I was smart enough to follow it. Well, that just goes to show that our teachers are truly our unsung heroes. You know, yeah. everybody can always point to an educator and say, this person at one point in my life made a significant impact on me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and uh, I, I think there's, and there's so many great teachers out there and and uh, they just need more respect as far as I'm concerned. That's where it all should start. I love that. And also shout out to Mrs. Reynolds as well, because, you know, she did a wonderful job with you too. She has done the best she could, you know, and, uh, you know, but, well, like I say, we've been married 55 years. And when we took the vows, death do us till death do you part, it looks like that's the way it'll be. <laughs> I love that, Jerry. Well, those are my only questions that I have for you, Jerry. Um, I guess before we wrap this up, um, is there anything that you wanted to share uh, in regard to just uh, Sacramento Kings or uh, if there's a message you have to fans or anything out there this year that I did not ask you or anything you want to say I didn't bring up? Only thing I can say is just, uh, you know, go to the games, enjoy the team. Enjoy the team. They're, they're a bunch of high quality young men. They got great leadership in every position. And, you know, just watch this unselfish team play basketball. Try to appreciate them for what they are. Don't expect them to be what you want them to be. Expect them, just enjoy them for what they are. Well, they're definitely enjoyable to watch and that beam. Oh, that, that's what I've got that. The beam, what did you think about that? I know last season was the first season, but what, what was your reaction to that? Oh, that's, I, that's a, one of the all time classic moves right there. Isn't that something? And you know every team league is trying to come up with something similar. So uh, another another great move by upper management, their ownership. I mean, that was, that's terrific. I, I get a kick out of it, you know. I mean, that is that is great, you know. Light the beam, buddy. Uh, you know, all I know is they're 1-0. Maybe they'll be 82-0. and 